In our previous video, we talked about how we can measure the center of the data with either the mean, median, or mode. Today, we're going to take a look at the question, how do we measure spread? And the first thing we're going to answer as we look at measuring spread is, why do we care? Why do we need? to measure spread. And the best way to explain why we need to measure spread is to take a look at four different data sets. We're going to work with these data sets in a couple different contexts. The first data set is 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. The second data set is 0, 0, 50, 100, 100. The third is 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. And the fourth is 0, 49, 50, 51, and 100. These four data sets are very different from each other and represent very different things. But if we just look at the measures of center, they all have a mean of 50 and a median of 50, which means if we look at just the center of these data sets, they all appear exactly the same, but they are not the same. We need some way to describe how spread out the numbers are. And that's what we're going to take a look at here, the measures of variance or variation, starting with the most basic type of spread, which is the range. The range simply is the largest value minus the smallest value. So for example, with data set 1, the data values 50, 50, 50, 50, the largest, we'll call it the maximum value, was 50. The minimum value was 50. And so the range is going to be 50 minus 50 or 0. There's no spread in those data values because they're all the same number. That makes sense. Data set 2, the maximum value was 100. The minimum value was 0. So again, we'll take the maximum of 100, we'll subtract 0, and we find the spread is 100. Those are much more spread out than the first data set. Now, the third and fourth data set are going to seem very similar because they both also have a maximum of 100 and a minimum of 0. So we'll go ahead and throw those up really quick. There's still going to be 100 minus 0, which is 100 on both of those, which kind of introduces another problem with the range is these are all the same. The problem with the range is it only works with the largest and smallest data values. It doesn't tell us how all the data values are spread out around the center. And so we have another me way to measure spread that's probably the most useful measure of spread out there. It is called the standard deviation. And what the standard deviation measures, in essence, this is kind of a loose definition, but it's the average distance from the mean. In the formula for the standard deviation, we usually use s to represent the standard deviation, is it is the square root of the sum, that means we add up all the pieces, of the data values minus the mean squared divided by 1 less than the sample size. 
Now that's a big and scary formula, so let's break down what that formula has us actually do. It's just a simple five-step process where all the calculations are quite basic. The first step, and it implies in step zero we've already found the mean. You have to know the mean first. And then step one is we're going to subtract the mean from each value. Once we've subtracted the mean from each value, we are going to square all the answers. And that'll give us a long list of numbers. That funky Greek symbol sigma means we are going to add all those answers together. Once we've added all the answers together, step number four is going to be to divide the answer by one less than the sample size. And finally, the last step is to take the square root of that answer. So let's try a few examples here working with those data sets that we saw up above. The first data set, I'll go ahead and list all the values because they're not on my screen anymore. The first data set was 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. We've already found that the mean of this data set is 50. In fact, the mean of all the data sets we're working with here are 50. So when we do x minus x bar, that really means that we're doing the value minus 50. And if my first number is 50, 50 minus 50 is 0, 50 minus 50 is 0, 50 minus 50 is 0, 0 and 0, which is kind of nice. It's going to make all the rest of the calculations really easy. Step 2 says we're going to take that answer and square it. So the first answer was 0, 0 squared is 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 0. And then it says we want to add all of those answers together. This is a really boring example. But let's continue to work through it. We're going to take that answer of 0, and we're going to divide by 1 less than the sample size. There were five numbers. So 1 less than 5 is 4. And 0 divided by 4 is 0. And then finally, to get our answer, we take the square root of 0, which is 0. Lots of zeros in this example, probably the most boring example we're going to do. But it should make sense, because if we say standard deviation measures the average distance from the mean, all these values are equal to the mean, and there's no distance between them and the mean. So it makes sense that it should be 0. 0 means there's no spread. All the numbers are the same. If there's more spread, we should see a much larger standard deviation. Data set 2 was 0, 0, 50, 100, and 100. And we're going to do the same steps. First, we'll subtract the mean from each of those. We've already calculated the mean here is 50. So 0 minus 50 is negative 50. 0 minus 50 is negative 50. 50 minus 50 is 0. 100 minus 50 is 50. And 100 minus 50 is 50. Then we want to take all those answers and square it. Be careful with negatives, depending on how you do them on your calculator and which calculator you're using. Squaring your calculator might say is positive or negative. You should know that a negative times a negative is always a positive. So this squared column should all be positives. So first, 50 squared is 2,500. 50 squared is 2,500. 0 squared is 0. 50 squared is 2,500. 50 squared is 2,500. And my next step says we're going to add all of those together to get 10,000. After
after we've added them together, we want to divide by 1 less than the sample size. In this case, there's five values. So we'll take 10,000 and divide by 1 less, which is 4. That's going to give us 2,500. And the final step for the standard deviation is to take the square root of 2,500, which gives us 50 for our standard deviation. That's a much larger standard deviation because these numbers are spread out quite far from each other. Let's look at data set 3, where the x's were less spread out, just 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. Now if we subtract the mean, which still is 50, 0 minus 50 is negative 50, uh, 25 minus 50 is negative 25, 50 minus 50 is 0, 75 minus 50 is 25, and 100 minus 50 is 50. Next, our formula wants us to square all of those numbers. Uh, 50 squared is still 2,500. 25 squared is 625. 0 squared is 0. 25 squared is 625. And 50 squared is 2,500. So we add those together which will give us 6,250. And then we're going to take that 6,250 and divide by 1 less than the sample size. Again, there's five values, so 1 less is 4. And I'm going to go ahead and save a step here. We're just going to do the square root on our calculator all at the same time. The square root of 6,250 divided by 4 should be 39. Point five, And so on average, we say the spread is about 39.5 from the mean. Let's do our last data set. The last data set had values of 0, 49, 50, 51, and 100. Again, going through the same steps, we have x minus x bar. We already know the mean of this data set is 50. So 0 minus 50 is negative 50. 49 minus 50 is negative 1. 50 minus 50 is 0. 51 minus 50 is positive 1. And 100 minus 50 is 50. Next, the formula says we square each of those answers. 50 squared is 2,500. 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 50 squared is 2,500. And so when we add these up, we get 5,002. Again, we're going to take that 5,002, and we're going to divide by 1 less than the sample size. There are 5 numbers, so 1 less than that is 4. And we'll take the square root of that answer. The square root of 5,002 over 4 is 35.36. And so as you might expect, because two of the numbers aren't as spread out in this data set, we see the standard deviation is a little bit smaller in this case. The smaller the standard deviation, the closer together the numbers end up. But we still kind of have a problem here in that both numbers are still really close together. When we're only using one number to summarize how all the numbers compare to the mean, it's a little tricky because it can be easily deceiving. We don't know if 49 and 51 are really close to the mean or 25 and 75 really far from the mean because both these numbers are so close to each other. So possibly a better way to describe the variation and spread of our data is to not just use one number, but instead use what we're going to call the five number summary, which 
also is visually represented with what's called the box plot. And the five number summary helps us divide the data into quarters so we can see how spread out each quarter is going to be in the data set. The five number summary is made up of the minimum, what we call Q1, the median, something called Q3, and the maximum. And just to clarify, we've got a couple new terms here, Q1 and Q3. Both really similar to each other. Q1 represents the first quartile. Another way of thinking about the first quartile is the median of values below the median. A little caveat there, we do not count the median. if it is a data value. Q3, really similar, is the third quartile. It is the median of values above the median. Basically, the quartiles split the data into quarters. The first quartile is the bottom quarter. The median is the bottom half. The third quartile is the bottom three quarters, splitting the data up. And both times this caveat goes is we do not count the median if it is a data value. Once we have the five number summary, it's often represented visually with the box plot which generally hovers over a number line to show the spread. And it looks something like this, where the end of this left tail is the minimum. The end of the box is the Q1. The middle of the box is the median. The upper end of the box is Q3. And the end of the last tail is the maximum. So we can visually see how spread out the numbers are. So let's do an example where we find this five number summary and then build a box plot. Let's say we look at the cost of several textbooks. Normally, we'd want to put them in order first, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. The first textbook is 140, then 160, 160, 165, 180, 220, 235, 240, 250, 260, 280 and 285. Usually I'll start first by finding the median and then the quartiles. The median is the one in the middle. So if we check off one from the top and bottom, 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 we kind of keep working our way to the middle. Looks like we've got two numbers in the middle. Well, we already know from a previous video that the way we find the actual median is we add them together and divide by 2. When I do that, we get the median is 227.5. Now, that 227.5 was between two values. The median is not actually one of the data values. So we've 
we don't need to worry about skipping that value as we find the quartiles. If it was exactly in the middle was one of the values, we would not include that value for this next step. To find the quartiles, we look below the median. And we're going to find the middle of the bottom ones. So we cross off one from each side, cross off one from each side. And there, we've got two in the middle below the median. So just like before, we'll add them together. Divide by two. That is our first quartile. 160 plus 165 divided by 2 is 162.5. Doing the same thing on the upper half will find us the third quartile. So we mark off one from each side, and we find our middle. Again, there's two values. So we've got 250 plus 260 divided by 2. That gives us Q3 is 255. Only thing missing now is to find the minimum and maximum. That's really easy. 140 is the minimum. 285 is the maximum. We now have our five number summary. Five number summary is 162.5. 227.5, 255, and ending with the maximum of 285. Or we can visually represent that with a box plot by drawing a number line that covers our values. Let's start a little bit less, maybe 130. Let's count by 20s. 150, 170, 190, 210, 230, 250, 270, and 290. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a box that's going to be for the quartiles with a line in the middle for the median. So the box goes from 162.5, which is around here somewhere, up to 255, which is around here somewhere. With a line in the middle at 227.5, 5, which is around here. And then we just have tails that go out to 140 and 285. And now I can visually see that each part of this box plot has about a quarter of the data. So I can see that this quarter, the third quarter, is much more packed together than the second quarter, which is much more spread out. And we can get a good idea of how spread out this data is by using five values instead of just one. So we've talked about three different ways to measure spread or variation. First, the range. Second, the standard deviation. And third, the five number summary. It's your turn to practice with some of these. Try them out and let me know if you have any questions.